parents, I just realized this in the middle of filming this teaching, I want you to go to my blog www.contextforkids.com and I'm going to give you some links to print out some maps on the computer or to look at them while you're watching this teaching. It'll make it a lot easier for your kids to visualize where different things are happening and it will also introduce you to a wonderful resource website. So, take a minute, go there, and get those maps. And I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ms. Tyler, and welcome to Context for Kids, Bible Geography number two. We're going to be talking about first century Judea. And you know, it's entire, well, it's not entirely, but it's very, very different from the ancient kingdom of Judah that we see in the Old Testament, which is also called the Tanakh by the Jews. And it's, um, yeah, well, you know, we're just going to get into it because it's a long and complicated story, but I had a great time studying it. And of course, the book I used was a book from my benefactor, my mysterious benefactor, Jennifer, who sent me an atlas called the Sacred Bridge. And it is really the atlas. And it's expensive. Right now on Amazon, you can, the, the prices come way down because they're getting, I, they might be getting ready to do a new one. I'm not sure, but you can get a copy for $80, which is incredible. And... It's not just an atlas. It goes through the entire history and archaeology of the entire region of the Le what's called the Levant from prehistoric times, um, <coughs> you know, through the the gospel times. So it's it's I can't say enough. It's unbelievable. I'm gonna. It's a good thing I brought my tea this morning, and I'm gonna be rudely <coughs> sipping from it. Because there's some kind of uh, new pollen when I move to a new place. It's like pollen, pollen, pollen. It takes me a few days, and then I kind of get used to it. So, first century Judea. Here we go. we got a map here of first century Israel. So this would be the Israel that Yeshua or Jesus was born into, that Mary and Joseph spent their whole life in. All the disciples, um, you know, all these guys. This was their context. So... I'm going to show you here, and I'll also probably put it up on the screen. I have some things marked here. Here we have the Jordan River. I have that in yellow. There were there were five administrative districts that Pompey the that Pompey set up. Pompey was one of the um, there were three generals in the Roman Empire that served as a trait. Tree under red. Pompey was one of them, and he actually, um, in the first century BCE, he actually took Jerusalem. Long story, I don't know if we're, we'll talk about that when we talk about Herod the Great a little bit, but not a lot. But he took the, um, the land of Israel away from the Hasmonean kings. Now, the Hasmonean kings were the kings that descended from the Maccabees. Don't confuse them with the Maccabees because the Maccabees, the Maccabean brothers who did the Maccabean revolt and whom Hanukkah was set up to, um, to honor the rededication of the temple after or during the midst of their revolt when the temple was cleansed and repurified and rededicated. Well, those were good men, but their children were not the kinds of men they were. They set themselves up as priests and kings. It was not cool, not good, and they were as bad or far worse than any of the kings who had come before them from the Babylonians, Medes, Persians, um, Greeks, or even later the Romans. They were, some of them were monsters. So the Romans came in, put an end to the Hasmonean kingship, and Pompey divided the land into five areas. Now up here we've got the Galilee, okay? And, um, and we have Perea, that was another area. We've got Samaria, we've got Judea, and we've got Idumea. We're going to learn a lot about Idumea in two weeks when we do Herod the Great. So he is one of the most interesting people in history, just period. I have had a riot 
reviewing and studying about him over the past two weeks. I can't wait to teach that. So anyway, today we're going to talk about Judea. But by the time Yeshua, Jesus was born, Judea actually pretty much included Idumea and Perea. So it was this area. But what Pompey did was he had the Jews concentrated here in Judea and Galilee, and Samaria was made this independent district of the Samaritans, who we're going to be reading a lot about, and we're going to talk about them later. But they don't come up in Matthew 2, so we won't be talking about them that soon. They will come up later. They are very important. So Pompey did that so that the Hasmonean high priest, because he let them keep the high priesthood, but stripped him of his kingship. So he was ruling down here, whoops, and down here, but there was this area in the middle that he didn't rule, and so there wasn't even a land bridge between his areas, which made it very, very hard for the Hasmonean high priest to maintain control. And so, but that's where Herod the Great comes in. Herod the Great, who was not so great, but let's call him Herod the Incredibly Interesting. So anyway, this map I, um, I got off of Bible History Online, www.bible-history.com. It's an excellent resource for your family if you don't want to invest in something like the Sacred Bridge, which I realize is a very expensive book. But, you know, it just depends on, you know, your family's needs, what you want to study, what you want to do, you know. You know, these kind of expensive books aren't for everyone. I needed it, and, and I'm gr very grateful that it was it was given to me, because it's a very precious gift. And I have almost all the pages marked with those little sticky things, and wow, I'm loving it. And you guys are getting to learn from it, so. All right, so that was for, oh, and I, I didn't, uh, some of the cities, and we'll talk about these later, where we got Jericho in blue here. You know Jericho? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Now we've got Jerusalem in pink. I always have Jerusalem in pink. I don't know why. I like pink. And uh, we've got Bethlehem down there in green, about six miles. We talked about that two weeks ago. Six miles southwest. So, you know, we... We've got Qumran and, and Herodium, that was a time Herod set up, and um, it's just all these very, Emmaus, Emmaus, your prob parents probably, I know about the road to Emmaus, I know about Jericho, all this stuff, well, you're going to as well. So there we go. Let's go on to the next one. This one is a more close-up of actual Judea. So we're not getting the Sumerian region uh, um, just slightly north and the, um, the Galilee above that. And we're going to talk about who was ruling all those areas um, when we talk about Herod and his sons. So again, Jerusalem in pink, Bethlehem in green, and this is the area that was Judea in the first century when Yeshua was born. So, anyway, lots of cities. And Bethlehem was, Bethlehem was like teeny tiny back then. You know, sometimes we would think it was big because it was a city of David. No, it wasn't very big. And especially during the first century. Oh, and here I got the, uh, I got Jericho in blue. And I got the Jordan River in, in yellow. And, and I don't know what that is. It's a piece of yellow up there. Yeah. And again... Bible History Online, great site. Definitely want you guys to visit it. And they've got good articles too. Okay, first century Israel. During most of the life of Yeshua, Jesus, Israel was divided into three provinces. Because remember, Pompey had divided it into five administrative districts. But after the death of Herod, it was divided more into three. You've got Judea in the south. You've got Galilee in the north and Samaria in the middle, and we've already seen that. And here it is again. So you see, I'll put big up on the screen now, you see Judea, and Idumea was part of that. 
Perea was part of that, Samaria was in the middle, and Galilee was in the north. And we know that Yeshua was actually physically born in Judea, that his family was from Galilee. And actually, I believe that's in um, Luke 1, no, Luke 3 maybe, that um, Mary and Joseph actually were from Galilee, and they just went down to Judea to register for the census, which we'll be talking about when we get to Luke. All right. Herod the Great. And we're just going to skim Herod because he's way too interesting for just like one slide, okay? But Herod the Great, at the time of the birth of Messiah, King Herod ruled over the entire area of Israel. But when he died in 4 BCE, it was divided among his sons. All right, and we're not going to talk about them this week, but we're going to talk about them... Oh, I guess it's next week, because I'm... Yeah! Oh, I can't wait. I'm, I'm having fun putting together my PowerPoints on that. Such a geek, right? Oh, speaking of geek, my husband bought me a shirt. It's Marvel Comics. This is so cool. It's got everybody on. It's got... I don't know who this guy is here. I didn't ever really read the comic books. Just like the movies. All right. So, here we go. In Six of the Common Era, things changed in Judea. And you see, Herod had given his sons reign in the different administrative districts, but sometimes his sons weren't fit rulers, okay? So, as a matter of fact, Herod Antipas, who was the son that was put over um, Judea, was a very wicked, evil man. So wicked and evil that Joseph was warned... Uh, I shouldn't go this far. Well, Joseph was warned not to return to that area. Because this guy was, was just so wicked. He was just like his dad. Okay, in 6 of the Common Era, so this is 10 years after the death of Herod, the first, pro, pro, Herod the Great, the first procurator, so that's like a governor, okay? So when you hear procurator, think governor, was pointed over Judea, and it was no longer under the authority of the Herodian kings. But Rome had taken, personally taken charge of it. Now, this is why... Oh, and it was procured at Caponius. Caponius, okay? And he actually did one of the kinds of censuses that we see in, um, in Luke that Mary and Joseph had to go and register for. Or was it in Matthew? It was in Luke. <laughs> you know, boy, I'll tell you all these details are swimming around in my head this morning. Um, but they did another census, and the purpose of a census was to determine how many families were in areas so it could be determined how much taxes they could extract from the region to send back to Rome. That's what censuses were about. They weren't to find out how many men, women, and children were there. They didn't care about the women and the children. They wanted to know how much taxes they could get. When the United States or most other countries take a census, it's to find out how many people live in the country and in different areas. And it's probably about taxes, too. But, you know, that's okay. Okay, we're not going there. All right, so it was no longer under the authority of Her Herodian kings, which is why it was Pontius Pilate, the procurator of Judea, the governor of Judea, who contemned Yeshua and not King Herod. Or not one of, yeah, not one of the Herods. It wasn't obviously the one that died in 4 CE. You see, how creepy would that be? How does my mind even go to these places? How do you guys even put up with me? I don't know. Okay, now let's talk, though this is the interesting thing. We're going to talk about different cities in Judea. So I can kind of introduce you to the kind of stories we're going to be seeing and where they took place, because that's going to be really important. I want you to, guys, when you read the Gospels, don't just read over place names. Find out about that place. Find out what kind of people live there. Find out um, 
if it was a Greek city or it, boy, we've got to talk about what Greek means one of these days. If it was a Roman city, if it was a Greek diaspora city, we've talked about that a little bit in the past. If it was um, a Jewish city, in, if it was a Jewish city in the south or a Jewish city in the north, if it was a Samaritan city, if it was one of the, the cities of the Decapolis, all of this is going to change what the story means. And oftentimes what Yeshua was talking about because he had to speak in terms that the people would understand. And people from different areas understand different things. Okay, so let's talk about cities in Judea. Bethlehem, duh. Jerusalem, duh. Jericho, duh. How about Hebron? Hebron was the city of Caleb, and that was the city where the patriarchs were buried. Bethany, oh, we know a lot of stories about Bethany. Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Um, the Mount of Olives, boy, the Mount of Olives you hear a lot about with reference to um, different things that Yeshua preached and the night before he was executed. It's where the Garden of Gethsemane is, on the Mount of Olives, at the base. How about Emmaus? Yeah, the two guys, after Yeshua's death, they were walking the road to Emmaus. And who met up with them? Oh, we'll get to that. Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, whose tomb Yeshua was buried in, was from Judea. <clears throat> and Jaffa. Jaffa was a big port city. So, here we go. Bethlehem. Bethlehem, we, we talked about this last week. Bethlehem was the city of David, six miles southwest of Jerusalem. It was shepherd country. It was even possibly Levitical shepherd country where the Levites would raise animals for use at the temple for probably the Tamid offerings. <clears throat> the, the shorter distance you had to ship the animals, the less likely they were to develop a blemish. And that isn't a very long way. It's a very small town in the first century. It's also, of course, where Messiah was born and where Joseph and Mary had to go and register for the census of queerness. <laughs> Come on, queerness's mom. Why'd you give him a name like that? Man, that was probably a good name back then. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, too. Jerusalem. Boy, we're going to talk about Jerusalem a lot. We're going to do two weeks on Jerusalem. It was the location of the temple on the Temple Mount. It, um, it was the city, well, it wasn't the city of David, but um, that's where David conquered. David took that city from the Jebusites and made it the capital city of Israel. Um, that's where all the feasts were held, where the men were required to go three times a year with their Haggagah, their festival offering, and feast and celebrate before God and where they were commanded to bring the first fruits of their offerings on the day of Pentecost or Shavuot. Um, uh, Yeshua did teachings on Solomon's porch. That's up at the temple. That's in Jerusalem. He did healings like at the pool of um, Bethsaida. He, he, we see so much happening in Jerusalem. He was tried at the house of the high priest, which was illegal, by the way. Not allowed to try somebody there. That was in the newer part of the city of Jerusalem in that time period. Yeah, the trial, crucifixion, and resurrection all happened in or in the vicinity of Jerusalem. And we're going to be talking about Jerusalem a lot. It's important to understand. And I can tell you about some really good atlases about only Jerusalem when we get to that. All right, Jericho. Everybody knows about Jericho. I think even people who have never read the Bible have heard about Jericho. Heck, if you've watched Veggie Tales, you know about Jericho. It says Dave in the Big Wall. Oh, I love that episode. Anyway, you know, they marched around every day for seven days, and then on the seventh day, they marched around seventh time, and they blow their shofars, and pff, wall came down, except for Rahab's wall. Part of the wall. That is just awesome! And we talked about that in Why is Rahab and Nisaiah's Genealogy, so if you want to check that out, that was about, about a couple months ago. All right, so the healing of the blind beggars took place on the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. 
Zacchaeus, you know, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. He lived in Jericho. He was a tax collector there. And he was a tiny little guy. Probably still taller than me. Okay. <laughs> uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan was on the road between Jericho and Jerusalem. Again, this is a very important road. <laughs> and it was 25 miles northeast of Jerusalem. All right, how about Hebron? Oh, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in the blog. I'm going to put in a link to these maps so you can print them out. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a little thing on the front and tell you to do it before you start the lesson. Why did I think of these beforehand? I don't know. Squirrel. Hebron. You know, Hebron is not actually mentioned in the Gospels, but it's the place where the patriarchs are buried. And it's 28 miles southwest of Jerusalem, but when we talk about the temple, I've got a really interesting story to tell you about what the link is between Hebron and the graves of the patriarchs, which was rebuilt by Herod, by the way, and still is there. Because Herod's architecture was so great that 2,000 years later, we can still find it. Wow, except for the Romans, you know, messed it up. Okay, that's 28 miles southwest of Jerusalem. All right, um, oh, no, I'm not going there. No, no, I'm going to blog about it. Okay, now, um, okay, Bethany, city of Bethany. We've got, that's the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Remember, he raised Lazarus from the dead, or maybe you didn't remember, but that was a miracle. He did it four days after the guy was dead. And that's very significant because of their beliefs about how long it actually took a person to be really dead. You ever see the Princess Bride? He's only mostly dead. There you go. <laughs> and his sisters, Mary and Martha, Mary who sat at the feet of Yeshua, and Martha who was had an incredible servant heart, and, you know, she was always whipping up food. Martha is my kind of woman. <laughs> As a matter of fact, any kind of woman or man who's busy whipping up food is my kind of person. Okay, Simon the leper. We see his house in Bethany. Um, we see the ascension of Messiah after he rose from the dead and he walked around for 40 days. That was where he, um, he went up again into the clouds to God the Father. Uh, it's 1.5 miles east of Jerusalem on the southeast slope of the Mount of Olives. All right, Mount of Olives, here we go. It was east of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It was across the Kidron Valley. Um, and that's where the Garden of Gethsemane is. And that is where they did the burning of the red heifer that we can find in Leviticus 16, I think. Was it? Yeah, Leviticus 16. Um, there, there was actually, in, in Yeshua's day, Jesus' day, there was this huge bridge across from the Temple Mount to the Mount of Olives because they would take the red heifer across and they would burn him outside the camp. That's a really interesting story. A little too complex for what I want to teach you. And it, it's, excuse me, it's not even going to enter into the New Testament teachings that I can even think of in any of the Gospels. So we're not really going to do that. But it's interesting. All right. Emmaus, the road to Emmaus. It's where Messiah meets two disciples on the road after his resurrection, but they didn't know it was him. And that is seven miles west of Jerusalem, they're pretty sure. That's one of the sites that they kind of debate, but they're pretty sure. All right, Arimathea, like I said, it's home of Joseph of Arimathea. Ugh. And they're not exactly sure where that is. All right, Jaffa. Okay, Jaffa shows up not in the Gospels, but in the book of Acts. There's a woman named Dorcas there who died. She was a wonderful woman, and she used to make garments. And my friend Dina Dio, see, I'm going to tell you about the book she's writing right now. It, it's, it's a book for grown-ups. She wrote a book called The Temple in Creation, A Picture of a Family. She is an incredible scholar. She's been studying. Um, she's a Messianic Jew. And she's been studying all of the Bible from the vantage point of um, 
how the Jews said things and how they meant things, and it really helps, you know, understand, um, especially like the book of Revelation and the prophets and all that. And um, she has found the temple in, in everything in, in the Bible, and she has a really interesting story about Dorcas in her second book, and she was telling me about that, and it's really very interesting. She believes that Dorcas was making linen garments for the priests, Okay, so anyway, um, then um, Peter's vision of the sheep being lowered from heaven in, in Acts 10. Very important. Without that vision, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be teaching about the Bible today. My ancestors would be idol worshippers, and I would probably still be one. Yep, we'll talk about that in probably 10 years when I get that far. <laughs> probably write about it in a... Well, I wrote about that actually in King Kingdom of Citizen, my book, so I... Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right, now let's look at differences between Judea versus Samaria and versus, versus Galilee. They were all very different. Now, we've talked about it a little bit here. And um, like with the marriage laws. In Galilee, where Mary and Joseph were from, it was forbidden for a man and woman to ever be together alone before they were married. But in Judea, it was allowed. Um, and Judeans had a different dialect. That uh, dialect is the way you speak. Like, um, oh yeah, when I lived in Minnesota, you know, people talk more like this, but it wasn't really pronounced like, oh yeah, if I was in... Uh, South Dakota? Oh yeah, it'd be way worse. You know, you, you'd really be, well, not worse, but you'd be able to hear it a lot more pronounced. But when I lived in Missouri, you know, some people talked a little bit more like this. Actually, that was Texas. Yeah, that was more Texas. I've lived in so many places. This is California neutral. People have different dialects based on where they lived. And all my relatives that come from Pittsburgh, I didn't live there long enough to pick up that dialect. But, you know, they all, my grandma would say wash instead of wash. <laughs> you know, just different people. And if you ever heard a Boston accent, I can't do a Boston. I never lived there. That's the hard one. And when I lived in Canada, it sounded like Minnesota, except we used a a lot. You know? <laughs> so, you know, the Judeans and Galileans, they were both what we would call Jews. Because when we use the word Jew... What we mean is that ethnic group, that all the people who descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That's not what it meant in the first century. As a matter of fact, if you're going through the Gospels, usually the word Jew means Judean, someone from Judea, as opposed to Galileans, like Yeshua, Jesus. Jesus and his disciples were considered Galileans. Whereas the high priest or the chief priests that we hear about were Judeans. Judeans didn't like Galileans very much. They didn't trust them to keep the laws of God. They kind of thought they were in some ways bumpkins. But the idea that they didn't respect Galileans as scholars at all is not founded in, in truth because um, the Talmud mentions great scholars from Galilee, all right? Now, Samaria in the middle was, they were not considered Jews. I mean, they worshiped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they had this funky Torah, okay? They only had the first five books of the Bible, and they were edited. So their Tenth Commandments, that instead of, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, house, ox, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. No, their 10th commandment says, you shall worship on Mount Gerizim. And they actually had a temple there. Okay, that was built in the time of um, Alexander the Great. I shouldn't bite my lip. I made it bleed. Give me a minute. But we're almost done. Um, the Samaritans were hated. In 9 the Common Era, um, the Samaritans wanted to desecrate the temple in Jerusalem. And so at Passover, they brought dead men's bones and they strewn them about. 
not cool. No love loss. No love loss. Okay. Let's see. Uh, those are all I can think of right now. There are many. Oh, oh, and I, and I mentioned this the other day. Um, there's a saying in the Talmud that um, they don't have much nice things to say about the Jews of the first century. And yeah, they they weren't nice people. I mean, a lot of them were. A lot of them were, but the leadership was, especially the the high priesthood. They were they were wicked. They were wicked. Not the priesthood, high priesthood and the chief priest, completely different. And we'll talk about that too. Um, in the Talmud, it says that Galileans loved honor over money. That sounds good, right? But Judeans loved money more than honor, which is not good. And that was a direct shot at the corrupt Sadducean priesthood. And we're going to talk about the Sadducees in a while. All right, so that is it for our Judean lesson. And I hope you learned a lot. And I, there were things that I didn't know before I started studying it. I am learning a lot so I can teach you guys. Because I have focused mostly on on big things, you know, um, like honor and shame and the covenants and um, patron-client relations, which we'll talk about someday, or I'll probably just write a book about it because it's way too complicated for 30 minutes. Okay, so our discipleship moment, doing good and talking to your parents. See, we're called to do good deeds in, in this world, but, but when you are young, Gosh, before doing good deeds for people, especially for grown-ups, I want you to talk to your parents about it. Gosh, it is so important. I want you to be safe. And I'll tell you something. A lot of times, um, people will say they need help when they actually don't. Um, especially on social media, someone will come... Oh, there's, I'll tell you something. Somebody really, really was trying to take advantage of me one time. Um, he wanted me to give money to his orphanage. Now, I didn't know anybody who knew him personally. I didn't have any proof that he had one. He went through, and I don't think he had one. He went through uh, my personal Facebook information, found out that I have a son with spina bifida and hydrocephalus, and he found a picture he, he posted a picture to me saying, oh yes, this child is in our orphanage and they're going to die any minute. We need $600 for, um, for surgery. Well, you know, that's the kind of thing that really makes a mom hurt. But I had no way of knowing if this person was telling the truth or lying and, and I think he was lying. I don't think there was any child. You know, it was just too much of a coincidence. He did it in order to get me personally to want to help him and give him money. And he's also came from a portion of the world that there's a lot of Islamic terrorists and they take money from well-meaning Americans that, that want to help out orphans and, and, and you know what, it's good to want to help out the poor and the needy. But you have to be wise. And, um, you know, just because an adult comes up and says, I need help, well, you know what? Grown-ups don't come to kids for help if they really need help. They just don't. Any adult comes up to you, says they need help, you take off and run. Seriously. I want you to have a heart for doing good things. But I want you to always do it in conjunction with your parents so they know what you're doing. Now, there are good deeds that you can do without your parents having any say in it at all. And I'm sure they, just, they, they agree with me. At school, if there's a new kid and no one's sitting with them at lunch, sit with them. If there's a child who doesn't have a lunch and you want to share, those are the kind of wonderful things that you can do that is going to hurt you, isn't going to hurt anybody, and is going to do great things. Those are the kinds of things that Yeshua, Jesus, would do. But I want you to always be safe. And there's always time to ask your parents if helping this person or that person is a good idea. You know, adults can be really tricky and sneaky. And they know how to make you feel guilty. 
They know how to make you feel. Some adults and teenagers and, and other kids will even make you feel bad about yourself if you don't do what they want you to do. But always be careful about those kind of people because people who really need help generally don't do things like that. Okay? So I want you to always talk to your parents. And trust your parents. They love you. Okay? More than I do even! <laughs> even see most of you guys. Although, you know, I'd like to someday. Alright. Just not all at once. Okay? Anyway, so, um, we're going to have another teaching this week because I didn't do Torah portion Hukot last year, and we it's going to be about um, Moses making the bronze serpent. And was that a graven image or not? So that's going to be really, really cool. And that'll be out in a few days. Anyway, I had a lot of fun with you today. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you're enjoying geography. This is really going to help you understand our Messiah. Of course, as I always say, nothing is more important than understanding the greatest person who ever, ever lived or ever will leave, live and who is coming back to be our king here on the earth. Anyway, I love you and pray for you and I hope you have a wonderful week studying the scriptures together as a family. Have a good week.